All inventions start with a great idea, but where do those ideas come from? The easy answer is to say that they come from the minds of geniuses, but some geniuses are even brighter than others. We are about to show you some incredible feats of building work and technological advancement that were years ahead of their time. In some cases, their ancient inventions that shouldn't even have been possible for their era gaze upon them in wonder. The ancient stone fortress of Sigiriya in Sri Lanka is a place so wondrous and mystical that some believe it deserves to be named as the eighth wonder of the world. Found in Sri Lanka's Matal district, the name of the location translates into English as the Lion Mountain and is notorious for being used by a king of the old world to hide from an attack from forces under the command of his own brother. The entire construction is a wonder that defies explanation, but the most breathtaking feature at the site is the lion staircase, a walkway covered in tiles that rises directly into the open jaws of the watchful lion. Only the bravest of tourists dare to walk all the way up to the top, but the limestone steps, with their brick and timber surrounds, make the journey worth it. Just as important as the staircase, though, are the frescoes and paintings that are thought to be the oldest surviving examples of Sri Lankan classical realism, dating back to the 5th century. As inhabitants of an island nation, it was inevitable that the ancient people of Great Britain would have something of a head start on the majority of the world when it comes to building ships. But could that head start have put them 3,000 years ahead of anybody else? That's the conclusion that's been reached by scientists and archaeologists investigating the seabed of what used to be Doggerland near the Isle of Wight, where they believe they found the remains of an 8,000-year-old shipyard. Many years ago, Doggerland was the strip of land that connected Great Britain to continental Europe, but it sank below the waves approximately 6,000 years as a result of the Ice Age coming to an end. Cutting-edge digital technology has allowed us to recreate the appearance of the shipyard as it supposedly looked during the years of its use. Previously, it was thought that the first humans to create boats did so approximately 3,000 years ago. So if the scientists are correct in what they say, it will change everything we thought we knew about maritime history. Here in the 21st century, we still consider the technology of artificial limbs and prostheses to be a developing one, as we search for devices that will give their users a better range of movement and sense of touch than they've been able to enjoy in the past. The technology has been developing for a lot longer than most people realize, and its pioneer was a humble English shoemaker. James Gillingham was running a shoe shop in 1866 when he met a soldier who had lost an arm to cannon fire in a battle. The soldier had been told by doctors that nothing could be done to assist him, but Gillingham was a man who liked the challenge. He built the soldier a strong, comfortably fitted leather limb, and from there, branched out into making custom limb replacements of all kinds. According to his records, he'd created a total of 15,000 prosthetic limbs by the year 1910, and in many cases, he has photographic records to prove it. The doctors of the time were keen to know how he made such perfectly designed prosthetics, but he went to the grave without ever giving away his secrets. Another of today's emerging technologies is the science of drones. They've been used in photography and reconnaissance for some time, but large companies like Amazon are currently investigating their potential for home delivery use. In doing so, they're following a pattern that began more than a century ago with the eccentric genius Nikola Tesla. Tesla is credited with inventing many incredible electrical items, but his most impressive achievement might have been creating the world's first remote-controlled device. Wireless technology was a lifelong interest for Tesla, and he was especially proud of the radio-controlled boat he displayed at Madison Square Garden in 1898. The concept was so alien to the crowd of onlookers that some of them were afraid of it, so Tesla decided to play into their fears by pretending he was controlling it with his voice, rather than the remote control he was hiding in his pocket. According to press articles that were written at the time, 
some of the audience ran away from the demonstration in sheer terror. In this time of selfies and social media, we place a lot of emphasis on beauty. Because of that, many people call upon the services of cosmetic surgeons to help them perfect their look. Once again, we think of this as a modern trend. But its roots go back further than you'd imagine. The first modern age rhinoplasty procedure, the cosmetic operation that celebrities would refer to as a nose job, happened in Great Britain in 1814 under the hands of Joseph Constantine Carpew. Carpew's patient was an army officer who'd suffered a total nose collapse due to the mercury treatments he'd been prescribed to treat a liver complaint. It took only 15 minutes for Carpew to complete his pioneering work for which the army officer was given no anesthetic. Although Carpew's skill was a revelation to people in Britain, the surgeon had been inspired by reports of similar procedures that were carried out in India some 20 years previously. In turn, Carpew inspired the German surgeon Karl Ferdinand von Graff, who is generally acknowledged as being the first person to use the phrase plastic surgery. Our next incredible invention is so complex and unique that it has no analog. It's considered to be the only universal astronomical clock in the world, and it was designed and built in Paris, France by Albert Billet in 1873. Billet was working for a relative of the Duke of Alba, a very rich man who wanted to own something grand, impressive, and completely unique. When it stopped working in 1911, Billet was dead and nobody else knew how to repair it. It wasn't until 1943 that a mathematician was able to work out the intricacies of its mechanisms and get it ticking again. The clock, which is 7 feet tall and 8 feet long, contains over 100 independent moving parts. That includes chronological aspects covering the Julian, Jewish, Gregorian, and Mohammedan calendars. It also shows the movements of the moon, sun, and major stars as they appear in the northern hemisphere. Just to make things even more impressive, there are a further 37 dials showing every time zone in the world, accompanied by further dials on the sides of the clock, tracking sunrise, sunset, the equinox, and solstice. 25 springs inside the device do most of the hard work, and the failure of just one would bring the whole thing to a stop. The idea of a submarine is almost as old as the idea of a boat. We can go back centuries and find examples of submarine-like designs from all over the world, but most of those ancient designs stayed on paper. Only one visionary of the old world had the skill and audacity to try to make a real-life working submarine. That was Cornelis Drebbel, who built three of them during the 1620s, and all of them worked. The Dutch engineer was working under the patronage of King James I of England at the time of his creation, and each of the three submarines he built was larger than the last. The third and final model was large enough to carry 16 people aboard, with no engine for propulsion. The boat was moved along using oars that protruded from waterproof leather seals, and air was fed in through tubes that resembled modern snorkels. Drebbel demonstrated his groundbreaking vehicles in England, where they traveled from Greenwich to Westminster and back at a depth of 15 feet beneath the water. Inexplicably, the British Navy of the time showed no interest in adapting the invention for military purposes. If you're one of our younger viewers, you may have frequently been told by your parents that 20 years ago, before the sat-nav became common in cars, people had to be able to read a map inside a car if they wanted to travel long distances. That was true in the majority of cases, but not all of them. The earliest example of a device that could be compared with a sat-nav can be traced all the way back to 1930 and went by the name of the Eater Avto. It could be fitted to a dashboard in the same way a sat-nav device would be today and came packaged with a series of tiny paper paps that could be fed through it like a printer. A cable connected the map to the car's speedometer, and so as the car moved along the road, the map would scroll up through the Eater Avto and keep track of the car's current position. There was a drawback, though. 
The device had no way of knowing whether you'd accidentally veered off the prepared route and changed direction. If that happened, you'd have to stop, find out where you were, and then manually reload a new map to get you back to the right place. During the 17th and 18th centuries, it was said that you could judge the class of a gentleman by the quality of his watch. That made watchmaking a glamorous and noble profession, and Frenchman Louis Moinet was sat at the top of it. The horologist wasn't only a creator of fine watches, he was also a skilled inventor. It took a long time for his invention to be recognized, but in 2016, the horologist was officially named as the inventor of the chronograph. For many years, Adolf Nicole was recognized as the inventor because of the patent they filed in 1844. But Moinet's device is almost 30 years older, having been finished in 1816. A chronograph differs from a chronometer in the way that, as well as being able to measure time with incredible precision, it also has a stopwatch capability. The incredible chronograph made by Moinet is accurate to 1 60th of a second. The standard he set was so high that it took the famous Tag Heuer company exactly 100 years to come up with anything more accurate. The idea of underground cities is usually associated with the kind of fantasy novels that J.R.R. Tolkien used to write. But ancient underground cities are a reality in many European nations, and perhaps Turkey most of all. The largest of Turkey's ancient subterranean settlements is Kaimakli, and it's truly a wonder to behold. The secrets of the sites are shrouded in mystery, but it's generally believed that the first people to live in their mud and stone walls did so approximately 4,000 years ago, and that their motivation for moving below the surface was avoiding the roving hordes of barbarians and other invaders scouring and pillaging the land above them. What makes Kaimakli special is its degree of organization and sophistication. There are a whole eight stories to the city, only four of which have ever been opened up to the public. There are even specialized rooms for winemaking, storage, cooking, and even theater. How its original architects could have performed such stunning work in near total darkness remains unknown. It's no secret that the Inca people who once lived in Peru were especially advanced for the time they lived in. We still can't make head nor tail of many of their carvings and artifacts today, but the site of Moray might be their greatest mystery. At first glance, the concentric circles that make up the site look like nothing more than an intricate decoration, but they serve a far grander purpose. These circles, which are found at the feet of the mountains of Cusco, appear to have been precision engineered to help ensure that the Inca had food to eat all year round. As each ring digs deeper into the surface of the earth, it gets a little warmer. The average difference in temperature between the outermost and innermost ring is a whole 15 degrees Celsius. Scientists and archaeologists believe that Moray was built this way because it would allow the Inca to plant different crops for different purposes, some that could be grown during summer months and some that would grow during winter. The level of agricultural knowledge that would have gone into designing and then creating Moray should have been impossible for the Inca. And yet here they are proving us wrong with this incredible archaeological site. Moray is just one of the things that the Inca left behind to remind the world of their genius. Another of their most astonishing artifacts can be found at the site of Saihuti. The whole area is covered with stunning ancient wonders, but the Saihuti monolith gets most of the attention and deservedly so. It's thought that Saihuti was a focal point for Inca religious and ceremonial gatherings, and a big part of those gatherings would have been the act of giving thanks to the Inca water gods in the hope that rain would soon come and feed their crops. They knew that the water would need a little help to feed the crops even if it did fall though, and so they became masters of irrigation. Before they went to work on the land, it appears that they designed a scale model of Saihuti as it appeared to them when they were there. The monolith has all the hallmarks of being a topographic model of the area, complete with projected water courses and possible irrigation paths. This is exactly how somebody designing a canal would go about testing their design now, but the Inca were doing it seven centuries ago. 
subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.